I got 27 minutes, I gotta get going. Okay, everybody. Hello, everybody, good morning. My name is Aaron James Draplin. I'm 44 years old, I hope to make it to 45. I'm a graphic designer. I'm making a I come from a family with a mom and a dad and sisters and shit. I have a girlfriend, I have a girlfriend, huh? I know what you're all thinking, him? Right? That's okay, it's, it's natural to think that, I do. 10 years we've been together, lucky girl, huh? I make logos, that's what I'm known for. That's what I'm known for among other sketchy things. But I hope that you would know that 90 out of 100 of these were made for my buddies. One of them, I got paid 25 grand. One of them, I got paid a burrito, okay? <laughs> so I've kept myself busy. I hope you know about that. I hope you know about field notes. I've been, this is 10 years of field notes. All the posters I've made over the years, you guys already ravaged the table. Thank you so much. All the merch, there's no business plan here. This was just because it was fun to make. This is number 369 or 370 in a half-assed career of making a fool of myself in front of lots of people. When you get to this page in the book, this is one of my favorites in the book because it's, it's design uh, where it wasn't for like big things. It was my little mouse finger to help a buddy for a benefit or, or, or someone's band or something. But that exists. That's real. And it's in that book, so it's there forever. Why? I'm fighting hard to live my life creatively. I want to enjoy the work along the way, provide for my mom and sisters and uh, uh, better half Lee and asshole buddy Dale a little bit, sure, too. And I want to be free. I want to be free. I know there's people here with big jobs, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're better. More meetings, more emails, more time wasted, you know? I haven't had an alarm clock waking me up since this morning, but this is a special occasion. <laughs> Chill out on the front there. Okay, new talk. Things that don't have a thing to do with graphic design, but first, how we do the things we do. I draw in my field notes at all times. I mean, this is where I live my life on the plane ride down, you know, last night. This is where I make my decisions, make a list, scratch it off, and that ends up as this, as a logo. But that's kind of misleading because really what my documents look like, they look like that. And this is an incredible privilege as a graphic designer to go that far off into the ether, right? And to, to, to tweak and, to, you know, when you're making a logo, vectors are free. When you're making a logo and you go through all these pieces like this, that's something that one year before I started in graphic design in 1990, I'm 91. In 1990, you couldn't do this now. To zoom in and zoom out took a week of photostat cameras and all that sort of shit. So just respect that, you know? We've got it pretty easy. Well, we've got it pretty easy. So that's what it looks like when I make stuff. I'm always looking at dead things. What do people do for fun in San Francisco? I got an idea. You know, I got an idea. They pay $5,000 one-bedroom rent. That's what's fun here. Great. But <laughs> Portland, Oregon, they got a little thing of wood with six little beers. That's cute, right? That's stupid shit like that. I go junkin'. I go junkin'. I go to places where no one goes, you know, where it's nothing. There's no app for this. I go looking for dead stuff, hanging around animals like this. Ah! Uh, uh. <laughs> Michigan, <laughs> that's where I'm from. But I've been rescuing stuff for years and years and years. And listen, this is cool stuff. This is stuff that's just, it's, it's debris, it's, um, it's, uh, it's throwaways, you know. But for everything I'll show you in a second here, I have thousands of photos for each photo. Because I've just been rescuing this stuff from the underbelly of America. These people don't have a book written about them. This is stuff that's, when you go to Nebraska, there's graphic design in Omaha, too. You go outside of that little town, and you go to that first cornfield, and you're going to see a little seed sign right there. That's graphic design in the most unpretentious form. That's my favorite stuff, because it works, and it works for 50 years. So when you see this stuff out there, I don't want to go back to 1950, when my friends couldn't do the same shit that I do. No, 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 no. But I like to look back graphically, you know, and to see the decisions they were making with one one millionth of firepower. And it's amazing because graphic designers learn how to complain about graphic design. I don't complain about graphic design, you know. I look at what, where we came from. I try to use these moves in my stuff and make a living ethically now, you know. But I don't want this stuff to go away because if it goes away, what are we going to have? Kardashians and fucking Star Wars posters. Sorry about the language in the morning. Bill me. When you make a logo that goes into metal, that lasts forever. And those decisions 
were beautiful 50 years ago. When I, I'm 44, when I was a little boy, you know, this stuff was being, you know, born and still works. When you see that little chin connect right there, you see the line, right? Illustrator, you know, what I work in 99% of the time, it'll make you connect that line. But you can see these craftspeople, they did it with, you know, optical sort of trickery, and it's beautiful. That thing is the size of the top of a pencil. And today at 25 feet, you can still see it work. That's the idea. But it's cool to me how some dead stuff became a whole new thing. When I saw this from a mile away, what is that typeface? I went and looked in my thing that night. I couldn't find it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. That night, pissed off, I built this. Because I went through all the other typefaces, choke and puke and crunch and all that shit from 1995. Couldn't find it. Built this. Used it for about 10 years, hunting and peck. And then my buddy Riley Cran from Lost Type up in Vancouver, he took it and built it into a proper typeface. And now we have this typeface, DDC Hardware, for sale for about a year and a half now. But it works for over 100 languages, our little typeface, all over the world. We got the Polish Ogonek in there. Yeah. But I acted on something that was dead and made it new, you know? And this is not meant to be cool. At the height of fashion, it'll just say something like, fish fry tonight, you know? Something like that. There's that Polish Ogonek. So check out DDC Hardware. It could have been gone forever. But it's scary to me now, because I love patriotic stuff. I get messed with because I have this on my leg. Well, you guys see that? See? Because that's my favorite logo of all time, the Bicentennial logo. Where I live in Portland, Oregon, if you talk or show this stuff, you're, I'm not even going to say it. You're some kind of Trump supporter, you know? Because what it's been morphed, and that's not the America that I bought into. I bought into the America that anyone can come here and make it. In this, and that's what I was told when I was five years old by my mom and dad around stuff like this. And when I make this stuff now, people come after me, you know? Grad students come after me. The gradier divided by the angle, the dangle, the coefficient of the hypotenuse divided by the big loan from some stupid Yale degree equals mean comments on my website. <laughs> stupid. I just like the idea of freedom for everybody, not just those who can afford it, okay? Well... And by the way, for the record, while I got y'all sitting here, for the record, fuck Don Trump. Well, I mean, really, the worst. Can't even tell the truth about the hair. Okay, moving along. Pile of shit, so sorry. When I got to work for my country, my little mouse finger, and my country that I disagree with a lot, and I'm afraid of sometimes, I'm afraid of now. But I got to see my little logo in my hometown. I got to work for my country. This isn't just the blue and the liberals, or whatever. This is all of America, right? Even the ones I don't agree with. That's how, he, they, that's how these guys talk. When I got to work for them and do that logo, and there it was, my buddy Chris Glass, you know, I just wanted to say thank you. Because if they knew who I was, I would have never been able to work for the president. No way. This is nine years ago, 2009. But I wanted to go meet him, and then Lee, I'm on the road entertaining you people, and he comes to Portland, and he's there, and I, I'm on the road entertaining, doing one of these things. I don't get to, she gets to meet him, she gets in her car crying, I met the president. She got to meet the president, and then I wanted to go meet the president. I've been jealous these last two years, and we got this little hole shot. We went up there, and we get there, and we get up to SeaTac, and I'm there, and I got my good Cabela's Bargain Cave sweatshirt on or whatever, and he gets about eight feet away from me, I start to cry. Because he's a decent person with dignity. And listen, my stupid aunt, who thought he was from Kenya, you know what? She was insured the last eight years. That guy helped her. But more importantly, he helped little kids that don't look like my friend's little kids, man, make America a little bit better. And when he got to me, all I could say in my moment of moments was, I'm going to miss you, man. That's what I said. <laughs> That's what I said. And if you see me there... You look at his face, you know, I got the hand clap. I got, the, he even hit me in the side, but look at the guy's face. That's not the face of security. That's pity, see? That's pity. 800 pound gorilla crying in front of the president. I miss him. But you knew about this shit, okay? Here we go. We got 15 minutes. How the hell am I gonna do this in 15 minutes? Okay. Things that don't have a thing to do with graphic design, things I didn't see coming. But yet, how being a designer, Surprisingly armed me to deal with this stuff. My long dog, Gary, oh, he was cute. 
my old wiener dog. I would draw him and make little logos and little things and patches and stickers. Oh, he loved tennis balls. He loved ankles. Oh, yeah. You know, this is my most, <clears throat> my most ripped off graphic right here. You know, but if you, you know, fine. I, we've raised so much money with all these like ASPCA benefits and stuff. And if a kid wants to take it and put it on his pumpkin, no problem. No problem. But all those years with little Gary, his little back finally went out, about five, six years old. And I couldn't put him down in Portland. And my mom and dad said, just bring him back to Michigan. We'll put him, we'll put him down. We'll put him in the family plot with all the gnats and goldfish and dogs and cats and shit. And then Gary. And my dad, we get to, I can't do it. My dad just says, that's it. Today we're doing it. Measure him. We measure him. I go into Illustrator. I build him a little casket in Illustrator. We build this thing. Like, my dad, why do you need 11 screws on the end? You know? I don't know. <laughs> but I carve his name in there. And we put him down as a family. But that day, it wasn't about being a graphic designer. It was about being a human who misses his little brother. But I used design that day to get me through this. Gary is in the cosmos right now. <laughs> who here has a record collection? Who has a hard time buying shelves? Right. So I got a big book collection. I got a book rec big record collection. And I went to the cool place in Portland, Design Within Reach, Design Out of Reach. I went to that place, and they did, they did a... Uh, a quote, 12,000 bucks to do this, to handle all my records. So I went and measured a piece of plywood. In Illustrator, I built it right down to the damn cut. I figured out exactly what it needed to be. And that day, I became a shelf designer. I did an Illustrator. That's how these things, you know, I can climb on that thing. It's so strong. 440 bucks, three sheets of plywood. And that day, it's no different than building a website. You know, but I forgot Like you, we're in a new era. If you don't need shelves, you go to shelf.app, you know, or whatever, right? <laughs> What's well, embarrassing? I'm my, I'm my, I'm my nephew's art director. Okay. I didn't ask for this before he was even born. There was a brief a mile long with all this shit for the baby shower and all the other things. I had all these icons and colors and stuff. And then he was born. I had to get all the specs, 10 fingers, 10 toes. He was beautiful that day. I cried my eyes out when I got to hold him. He was 11 minutes old, little Oliver, and I, cr I cried so hard. I almost stepped in a bowl of afterbirth that morning. Yeah, very natural, very natural. He had a hard go for the first two months, and then he was kind of like, wasn't taking the milk. I don't remember, you know, how, how, you know he was just kind of, my mom used the word sickly, the old-fashioned word. But he would come to the shop, and I would weigh him, you know, <laughs> you know check him out, little bear suit, look at him. <laughs> And I would go do, you know, he, he got healthy, you know, within a couple months. And, you know, I would go watch him when he was a year old, splashing around his pool at, you know, two or whatever. And I would draw him. And then a day later, someone would say, see that on my Instagram and say, what was that? Is it a band? You know, I said, no, it's my little cousin. I was, you know, my, my nephew. I was just watching him, you know. Look how cute he is with the little jacket. And look how cute Oliver is. That's a joke. That's a, that's a joke. That's a, that's a quick, okay. Every year at tax time, April 15th, no problem. No problem. I got my taxes covered, okay? But, you know, that's three weeks before Oliver's birthday on May 7th. Three weeks before it, and then the brief shows up. And we're doing a Star Wars theme this year, Aaron. Right, right, right. Yoda sodas. We wrap them around the juice box. Right, right. I did a little bit of Photoshop to get in the spirit. Right. Yeah, yeah. So when he turned seven, he had a bowling thing. I did all that stuff for him. Here I am, the grand retelling of the day my nephew was born to all his little buddies. It's, it's a little bit of stagecraft, whatever. But he'll come to the shop, and I, I entertain him with making little pieces of pipe, and then I'll say, just sit still, let me get your shot, and then he'll come over my shoulder, and he'll art direct. Yeah. <laughs> so, he, I'm just the instrument. I'm just the instrument. Here he is with his little buddy. I don't remember the kid's name, Twig or Bark or Birch or so. I don't remember the kids. I don't care. A little, little goofy little shit. But anyway, they're on a baseball team, and they got to name themselves, and they named their baseball team, they're seven-year-olds, the Pizza Kings, the Pizza Kings. And they had some kind of shit little jersey, and we, he came to the shop, we sketched it out, I made him a thing, you can buy this on my website right now, we sold 100 shirts for that little team, the whole team gets the shirt now, the whole team gets the shirt, the Pizza Kings, this is coming, four color. Okay, the new Portland, Oregon, this is my shop. I've been there 10 years with my older brothers. I'm the baby of the family. Look at my two older brothers. There's Goo and there's Dave. That's John Femister, Dave Nakamoto. I'm the baby of the family, 44, 49, and 48. We've been there 10 years. We've been watching over each other. 
but we're breaking up the band. We're breaking up the band because the New Portland, lots of traffic, people honking. Fucking 40 minutes to get seven miles, that's embarrassing. We're not Los Angeles. So in my backyard, I'm building this. Built this. It's almost done. How do you tell when a contractor's lying? You see if their lips are moving. That works for web developers, too. <laughs> oh, uh-oh. The speaker bites back, huh? So I built it in Illustrator, and I went through and just figured it out. I need a third to work and sit and live and have all my records and guitars and shit. Lee needs two-thirds to do all the shipping. Lee does all the shipping. It's just the two of us. Upstairs, I need a widow's nest for my mom, because when she comes out from Michigan, I need her you know, to be able to crash and have her own shower and her own shitter up there and the whole deal. But when you work with an architect, the architect listened to all my needs. I'm paying for all this. I gave him the drawings. He switched it around. And I had to go back and say, no, I sit here. My mom is upstairs there as far possible as each other. <laughs> Come on, man. And I had to pay for that change. Who is the client? You know? But he got it right. And I, I measured everything in my shop in Illustrator. We figured out all these little you know, 3D renderings. And this thing's built in my backyard right now. But what's been amazing, it's my mom's, little widow, my mom's widow's nest. See this right here, all this plywood right here? This is in my little one-third. That's six sheets, seven sheets of plywood, about two grand. 180 record cubes was what we had you know, planned on. Here's where you look up. It took these guys about eight or nine months. I'm moving from my shop downtown with my brothers to my backyard to make my life as simple as possible. My commute will be 10 steps, right? <laughs> and this is happening right now. We got drywall. We got drywall. But that's what it looks like. It's coming together. I've designed all the little nooks become things like that. This is going to be incredible. Now, look at this. Illustrator. <sighs> Reality. They just built this when I was in London last week. 25 screws to put that thing together, right? We thought this through. I have 146 record cubes. That's amazing. Peaceful resistance. I hate them, but I'm not going to hate them out of office. Instead, we've been making a lot of stuff like this. Downloadable, giving it to kids. This, instead of this, this is going to get them out of office. That's what I was taught when I was a little kid. I know I'm talking tough up here now because I'm scared, right? But we raised a thousand bucks for the ACLU on this poster. I've been making a lot of these. My girlfriend, and see, this morning when I got this call, you know, I can work and go make fun of Trump, or I can do something for breast cancer. I went with the breast cancer, man. I, you know, and we raised a thousand bucks to, to battle something even scarier than that guy. My little painting. But there, here's northern Michigan, man, middle of nowhere. You know how they vote back there, but that guy has my poster in his little downtown. That's amazing. My girlfriend, she made her own little project called Notes to Self. My favorite card she made is this one. <laughs> and you can send that to your senator or congresswoman or whoever the hell and say, what the fuck are you thinking? Little patches and little goodies and pins and stuff. And she's, you know, selling these in stores. You can get them out on the table out there. But go check her out, underscore Notes to Self, because this is one person creatively fighting back. She, she raised three grand for the ACLU with her little project, My Lee. That's amazing. Bernie things, real quick. I got to work for Bernie. They said, make a poster. I was so excited with all that hair and teeth. I made three. Yeah, I made three. And then I got to go see him and about two years ago, and we got to go to this big art show, and I'm at the art show, and you can't see nothing. It's all, you know, elbows and assholes and iPhones and shit, and you just can't see nothing. And then a little bit of Bernie right there, just a little bit of Bernie right there. And then he gets on the podium. We're all behind the podium, all the artists, and I start to cry, man. It's Bernie, you know? What was that word that he had? Uh, what was the thing he uh, exhibited for 58 years? Integrity, uh, right? Uh, yeah. My buddy Lewis, see my buddy Lewis looking at me? He's going, why are you crying, Draplin? I said, fucking, you know, because he works with Bernie. I said, it's Bernie, it's Bernie. He grew up with him. But they whisk him out of there, and I didn't get a chance to selfishly get my photo to show you guys. They get him out of there, there's nothing. I have no proof I was even there. But I was digging around in some photo banks, and I found this. <laughs> okay. okay. My dad was incredible. I was my dad's art director. My dad was incredible. Was 
is. Where's my dad now? We lost my dad. That's him meeting his little grandson, Oliver. So beautiful. Bride, look at all that mass. <laughs> only known footage of my dad doing his patented Moby Kowalski dive. That's the only, it's like a missing link, Bigfoot shot. Look at all the people in the back hitting the deck. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my dad hiding. <laughs> he was crafty with straws. If your ice tea wasn't working, yeah, you might want to check underneath the, yeah. My dad was so cool and just so full of shit and so full of life and so full of us and just incredible, and, you know, incredible guy. He played Santa Claus for little kids who, need, he didn't like to say poor kids, he'd say, Aaron, they're kids who don't have a good Christmas. And he helped them every year for 25 years and he would raise 7,000, 5,000, 6,000 to help these kids. I made him all of his business cards and stuff. That's our famous fall portrait. We were in line with all the communion uh, moms, with the little babies, with all the little ugly, uh, little ugly babies and shit. You know, we're in line. Me and my dad are there, and we're moving along. And then by the time we get up to the thing, we sit down on a little thing, and she puts the wooded scene behind us, and we don't fit in the vertical format. So she had to get an Allen wrench out and do this, and she's all pissed off. Anyway, that's it. Now, my dad had a big, gnarly wallet. Now, in a lot of stupid shirts. There's a stupid shirt and that big wallet. But the story is... He, this was at the Polka Fest, and every year you're supposed to, my dad would volunteer, he's supposed to do a dollar a chip. One year, my dad gave out a thousand chips. That's the record. That's against the, you're not supposed to do that. But everyone knew to go to my dad, you get a free beer token for the Polka Fest, right? That night, he's a little tipsy, he goes out to the thing, to the, uh, the honey bucket, he goes out to the take a piss, and he's out there, and he's got that big wall, those big dumb khaki shorts, and that stupid watermelon shirt, and he's out there, he gets into the honey bucket, and he, Tinkles, he turns around. As he's turning around, he hears his wallet go, dunk, 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 sploosh. And my dad lost his wallet, and he went and got his buddy Dan Goldsmith, and in the moonlight, they got the door cracked open. My dad's up to his arm and the thing digging around in there, and he got his wallet out. Damn, got a tough crowd, huh? Well, <laughs> just trying to illustrate my dad, you know? Everyone else would just cut their losses, not my dad. And then he died. And my, the greatest role I've ever had as a graphic designer is not making money, not entertaining 900 people at this point. Thank you for having me. My dad designed me. And I got to design his life, too, and his death. Because when he died, he, my dad collected Mickey Mouse. This is tattooed on any number of sketchy aunts and uncles. Oh, yeah. All my buddies in the web developing community, you know, they came to me and said, we got you, man. They built these comment sites because for my dad, I don't know how to do this stuff. And that's how we connected. When we had our funeral for my dad, we had it budgeted for 300 people. 500 came for my dad's deal. And we're in there at the archdiocese, and there's Phyllis, who's 77, and she's looking at me saying, well, I'll be designing all the materials. Uh, my mom kind of steps up, Aaron, this is Jim's son. He's a graphic designer out in Portland, Oregon. He'll be doing his dad's materials. No, that's not how we do it in here. And I'm, you know, I'm lurching at Phyllis. She's 77 years old with her tandy speak and spell, print out Epson bullshit. And I got, no, no, no. I did the materials. I made all of his hymnals, all that stuff. We didn't make him some shitty Epson print. I made him a six-page zine, my dad, eight-page zine. And we gave them out to all those people. And we, I printed a mountain of these things. Because here's the deal. It's not the death. I mean, I don't know where my dad went. I miss him, but I had him for 40 years, and we were tight. Where'd he go? But now, I'm so proud because when, once a summer when I'm home, my mom has the phone, and she goes, hello, oh, hey, Carl. And she's saying, it's Carl asking for your dad. He doesn't know your dad died. Because these old timers who are 85, they don't have phones and shit. My dad's name is on a piece of wood on a door with a pencil. And he's calling my dad, and, he, and she hands me the phone, and I go, Carl, he says, Aaron, put your dad in the phone. I say, Carl, we lost my dad. And this guy's 85 years old, and he starts to cry on the phone. I mean, that's a heavy call. But a couple days later, when he came to our house and sat with my mom and held her hand, an old-fashioned thing, and told, we told the story from a couple summers ago. You know, I loaded him up with pins and patches and stickers and all the materials, and that guy is wearing one of my shirts with my dad's face on it now. And that will help him too. So I would just say, and I don't mean any disrespect, if you've been through a funeral, when you do have to go through a funeral, it's going to be weird. But what we do for a living should not just be for what we you know, Use it to make it better for the family. 
So, you know, I, I designed my dad's death, too. I hope that's not too weird. I got 15 seconds. Well, we might have to make a book. We sold a mountain of the things. They turned out great. We went on, look at her. Went on a big fall tour. And at last count, look at that. I cried my eyes out when I saw that in Barnes & Noble. But anyway, last count, we're in the seventh printing. And look at this shit. 45,000 we sold of those damn things. But you know what? That's New York City telling me, Aaron will sell 4,000. I said, great. Because if it sold 4,000 only or 400, I'd be cool with it. It should have never happened. But when it sells 45,000, then the book company wants to do it again. And the book company says, what do you want to do next? And I said, self-publish. Anyway. <laughs> okay, recent things we made. Sun patches. Uh, uh, get caught. The universe is expanding in every direction right now, so I made a Frisbee. Uh, Suffer the Trailblazers. Finex cast iron. Marin put me on his podcast. Got all pissed off and I made him sign them. And then they put me on his podcast. Matches. I did one of the first LGBTA cards for Target. Big bone pencils. They're about that big around. Uh, cookware, field notes, uh, new watermelon patch. You'll see I love watermelon. Get a big thing from Safeway. I love that shit. A new pretzel patch coming in the works pretty soon. All this raises, uh, these raise money for kids around Indianapolis. Dinosaur Jr. saw those, and I got to do a Dinosaur Jr. poster. Dinos John Hodgman saw the dinosaur poster. I got to, anyway, I did Hodgman's latest book cover, illustrated him for the back. The back, the inside cover, so cool. You're, who are your heroes, you know? John's one of my heroes, and now a you know, client. Fourth Skillshare is out and raging along. Got to work for Jill Soloway, Chris Stapleton, a big bearded country guy. I didn't know how big he was, and I said, wouldn't it be cool if we made you a T-shirt with that new logo? And that's what it looks like on the T-shirt, because, you know, what if you guys had a big rig? They have 11 of these things, carting all the shit around all summer long. So that's real in America right now. Made him a patch. Isbell went on tour with him. I got to do a poster for Isbell, stuff for the Sleeping Bear Dunes. I went to the dark side, worked for Jerry Garcia's family. That was cool. This is tattooed on all sorts of people all over hell. I don't know where. <laughs> Little thick lines, things. I got to work for Ryan Adams. Goes to 13. Um, I, I don't fuck around with anything with uh, mustard, with uh, anything with twigs or bark or honey or, or pebbles or any of that shit. I like yellow mustard about a Pantone one. Uh, <laughs> been working on a perfect mathematical logo for our gallery. This is real right now. Don't forget that, you guys. You're going to hear from Val. You're going to hear from I mean, there's a heavy crowd today, heavy speakers. But just remember, man, this shit's real. The rest of your life, long before you and long after you, that's real. All right, look at this. I'll leave you with this. Kid knocks on my door. Dun, dun, dun. Open the door, and it's this little family. And she got her son, and the kid's smiling. And the mom goes, his favorite graphic designer, Isaac. I go, well, hi. And he comes in the shop, and this is his logo. We became buddies that day. But he, I said, what's your favorite logo you've made? And I met this kid at the shop. Why am I doing any of this shit? Because if that kid at 12 is making this stuff, you hear that? That's your stock price going down. You hear it? <laughs> you can just barely hear it. It's just there. I can hear it. There it is. Little Isaac, who, my new buddy. I'll see him up in Seattle at the dribble thing on Tuesday. He's coming. All right. I, don't, I think we're over time. Well, okay, people I met in Eyeball and airports and whatnot. Okay, ready? I met Marin. I met the catfish dudes. I met Chip Kid, Hodgman, Mascus, Kip from Napoleon Dynamite. I met. Okay, long story short, I saw this piece of shit in Minneapolis. And you know what? When we got off the plane in Des Moines, everyone was looking at him. Everyone was looking at him. And I walked up to him and I went, Ted Nugent! Because you know what? Fuck Gene Simmons. It's a bad person. You know who I met in the airport? Richard Simmons. <laughs> All right, okay. A couple last things. Design shouldn't just be a nine to five thing. Don't be afraid to apply this stuff to every, whatever your designer, maker, coder, whatever, marketer, whatever. Apply it to your life, not just your job. That's a privilege we have. Here's the thing, man. All the stuff that didn't have anything to do with graphic design, that's the shit I still, that I use for, that I use graphic design for. That's the shit I still hold the closest to me. And that is an incredible privilege and an honor. Because, you know, next time you get your insurance quote, look at it real close and look at your person who makes your insurance quote. They don't like their job. We are lucky to be alive. We are lucky to do this for a living. Use this stuff. Thank you, all you incredible, beautiful things. Thank you for listening. Follow us. The book.